The Catcher in the Rye, Chapter 20 I kept sitting there, getting drunk and waiting for old Tina and Jenny to come out and do their stuff, but they weren't there. A pretty looking guy with a wavy, wavy hair came out and played the piano. And then this new babe, Valencia, came out and sang. She wasn't any good, but she was better than old Tina and Jenny, and at least she sang good songs. The piano was right next to the bar where I was sitting and all, and the old Valencia was standing practically right next to me. So I gave her the old eye, but she pretended she didn't even see me. I probably wouldn't have done it, but I was getting drunk as hell. When she was finished, she beat it out of the room so fast I didn't even get a chance to invite her to join me for a drink. So I called the head, right, head waiter over. I told him to ask old Valencia if she'd care to join me for a drink. He said he would, but he probably didn't even give her, give her my message. People never give your message to anybody. Boy, I sat at that goddamn bar till around 1 o'clock or so. Getting drunk as a bastard, I couldn't hardly see it straight. The one thing I did though, I was careful as hell not to get boisterous or anything. I didn't want anybody to notice me or anything or ask how old I was. But boy, I could hardly see straight. When I was really drunk, I started the stupid business with the bullet in my guts again. I was the only guy at the bar with the bullet in their guts. I kept putting my hands under my jacket, on my stomach and all, to keep the blood from dripping all over the place. I didn't want anybody to know I was even wounded. I was concealing the fact that I was a wound, wounded son of a bitch. Finally, what I felt like, I felt like giving old Jane a buzz and see if she was home yet. So I said, so I paid my check and all. Then I left the bar and went out where the telephones were. I kept keeping my hands under my jacket to keep the blood from dripping. Boy, was I drunk. But when I got, in, when I got inside this phone booth, I wasn't much in the mood anymore to give old Jane a buzz. I was too drunk, I guess. So what I did, I gave old Shelly Hayes a buzz. I had to uh, dial about 20 numbers before I got the right one, but was I blind? Hello, I said. When somebody answered the goddamn phone, I sort of yelled it. I was drunken. Who is this? This very cold lady's voice said. This is me, hold and coupled. Let me speak, Sally, please. Sally's asleep. This is Sally's grandmother. Why are you calling at this hour, Holden? Do you know what time is it? Yeah, I want to talk, Sally. Very important. Put it on. Sally's asleep, young man. Call her tomorrow. Good night. Wake her up. Wake her up. Hey, other boy. Then there was a different voice. Hold on, this is me. It was old Sally. What's the big idea? Sally, that's you? Yes, stop screaming. Are you drunk? Yeah, listen, listen, hey. I'll come over Christmas Eve, okay? Uh, trim my goddamn tree for you, okay? Okay, hey, Sally. Yes, you're drunk. Go to bed now. Where are you? Who's with you? Sally, I'll come over and trim a tree for you, okay? Okay? Hey? Yes, go to bed now. Where are you? Who's with you? Nobody. Me. Myself and I. Boy, I was that drunk. I was even still holding on to my gut. They got me. Lucky small got me. You know that, Sally? You know that? I can't hear you. Go to bed now. I have to go. Call me tomorrow. Hey Sally, you want me to trim a tree for ya? You want me to, huh? Yes, good night. Go home and go to bed. She hung up on me. Good night, good night, Sally baby. 
So this is hard, darling, I said. Can you imagine how drunk I was? I hung up too. Then, I figured she probably just came home from a date. I pictured her out with the lunch and all summer. And that and and the jerk. All of them swimming around in goddamn pot of tea and saying uh, sophisticated stuff to each other and being charming and funny. I wish to God I hadn't even phoned, you, phoned her. When I'm drunk, I'm a mad, <clears throat> I'm a madman. I stayed in the damn, damn phone booth for quite a while. I kept holding onto the phone, sort of, so I wouldn't pass out. I wasn't feeling too marvelous to tell you the truth. Finally, though, I came out and went in the men's room, staggering around like a moron, and filled one of the wash valves with the cold water. Then I drank my head in it. Right up to the years, I didn't even bother to dry it or anything. I just let the son of each drip. Then I walked over to this radiator by the window and sat down on it. It was nice and warm. It felt good because I was shriveling like a bastard. It's a funny thing. I always shrivel like hell when I'm drunk. I didn't have anything else to do. So I kept sitting on the radiator and counting there these little white squares on the floor. I was getting soaked. About a gallon of water was dripping down my neck, getting all over my collar and the tie and all. Tie and all. But I didn't give a damn, I was too drunk to give a damn. Then, pretty soon, the guy that played the piano for old Valencia, this very, this very weeby haired, pleady looking guy, came in to comb his golden locks. We sort of struck up on a, a conversation while he was combing it. Except that he wasn't too goddamn friendly. Hey, you gonna see that Valencia baby when you go back in the bar? I asked him. It's highly probable, he said. Witty bastard, all I ever meet is witty bastards. Listen, give her my compliments. Ask her if the goddamn waiter gave her my message, will ya? Why don't you go home, Mac? How old are you anyway? 86, listen, give her my compliments, okay? Why don't you go home, Mac? Not me, boy. You can play that goddamn piano. I told him. I was just flattering, flattering him. him. He played the piano, was thinking. If you want to know the truth, you ought to go on the radio. I said, handsome chap like you, all those goddamn golden locks. You don't need a manager. Go home, Mac, like a good guy. Go home and they hit the sack. No home to go to. No kidding. You need a manager? He didn't answer me. He just went out. He was all through the combing his hair and the patting it and all. So he laughed like a strad later. All these handsome guys are the same. When they are done combing their goddamn hair, they beat it on you. When I finally got, uh, got down of the radiator and went out to the head check room, I was crying and all. I don't know why, but I was. I guess it was because I was feeling so damn depressed and lonesome. Then, when I went out to the check room, I couldn't find my goddamn check. The head check girl was very nice about it though. She gave me my coat anyway, and my little shawly beans record, I still had it with me and all. I gave her a buck up for being so nice. But she wouldn't take it. She kept telling me to go home and go to bed. I sort of tried to make a date with her for when she got through the working, but she wouldn't do it. She said she was old enough to be my mother and all. I showed her my goddamn gray hair and told her I was horrid too. I was the only horsing around. Naturally, she was nice though. I showed her my goddamn red hunting hat and she liked it. She made me put it on before I went out because my hair was still pretty wet. She was all right.